This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hey everybody, welcome to Groomer Humor on Pet Life Radio. Once again, we are your hosts, I'm Rudy V, along with Anthony Ray. First and foremost, as always, we want to thank our producer, Mark Winter, and Pet Life Radio for giving us the opportunity, and we want to thank you guys for listening to us. In this episode, we're going to be asking the question, should groomers hand strip? Some of you will know what hand stripping is, some will not. But we're going to explain it. We're going to talk about it in this episode. And as always, we have our very funny comment segment coming up on this episode of Groomer Humor. Are you listening to this right now with a cell phone clenched between your teeth as you frantically flip pages on your paper calendars? Or are you a new breed of groomer bred for speed and efficiency of movement? 123 Pet Software automates your communications, doing the reminding, confirming, thanking, and marketing for you. 123 Pet centralizes your schedule, employees, clients, inventory, and more. 123 Pet is the business management software you need. Start minding your business today. Visit 123PetSoftware.com. So now I've got this pack of four Sharpe Rescue dogs for, oh my goodness, probably five, six years. They get a regular diet of Dynavite with every meal. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. People remark on what beautiful coats they've got. I tell them, you don't need to wait until a problem presents itself. It's far better to keep the dog happy and healthy at all times. You won't believe how happy your dog will be. I get my Dynavite from D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Groomer Humor. Guys, once again, we're your hosts. I'm Rudy V along with Anthony Ray. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode, guys. We're so excited. We have so much going on. We didn't want to uh, not do our podcast because, uh, as you all know, we are moving our store and we're a little bit crazy, but we figured we definitely want to keep in touch with you guys. So hopefully you guys are all well. And, uh, Ann, how are you doing, man? Same as you. <laughs> same as me. <laughs> the store just, stuff is just crazy. Just, just, and same as you. Same yeah. as you. Yeah. Hey, guys, what we're doing right now is that we're actually like not even able to function in our current location right now. We just pulled all the stuff out of our drawers and, and, and I, like things that I'm coming across, like just ridiculous, like old grooming tools that you just wouldn't believe. And I, that's why we decided to write the show because I pulled out a bunch of old stripping knives uh, and I'm going to explain that to you in a second. But I was just like, what the heck am I doing with all these tools? I got, I got, I got blades that are so rusted out. Like, you know, you could use them for like, you know, skipping on, on water, you know, <laughs> chuck them into the water. You know what I mean? They're just so <laughs> rusted out. <laughs> like I didn't even know I even had this stuff. Yeah, I'm yeah. Uh, man. Now I really want to go skip stones. Yeah, love doing that. Yeah, that was fun. Remember? Yeah, we used yeah. To do, we were really good. Yeah, I was better than you though. I don't think so. I think so. I don't think so. Uh, okay. No, you were pretty good. You have a good arm. Very, you're a very strong yeah. kid. Mm. Very strong. Yeah, I'm big boned. <laughs> so yeah. I have a <laughs> what, what is it called? A, a high center of mass or whatever, whatever the gravity. I'm heavy. Yeah, I have my own gravitational pull. You're bulky. You're yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> right. I'm bulky. You're yeah. bulky. Stuff right. stuff flies around me in a circle every once in a while. It's, a, <laughs> it's, it's embarrassing when you're at the post office. Uh, but you're not always like that. You lost a lot of weight. You looked good. What happened? Now, now you look like uh, you, you you look like fat Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like uh, that's just you know you know me. That's my thing. I I'm like uh, who does it like that? Uh, Jonah Hill. Yeah, one day I'll be 230 pounds uh, on the couch, usually, mm-hmm. and then uh, and the next day I'll be 150 pounds and I'm I'm running 10 miles in a day. Yeah, and I, and yeah. I, now I'm an athlete. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I, mean, I don't know. I I just I don't know. 
Yeah, well, get back to it, man, because, you know, you just, I'm not saying you're fat, but you could use to shed like 80. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 80, 90. That's what I lost last time. I got to stop doing that. It's really not good for the old heart. <laughs> no. Yeah. I remember when you were calorie counting. Remember, what were you eating? You were eating like, I was you know, eating, oh, pot God, pies or something. So bad. I was, yeah. e I was eating 500 calories a day, which is just starvation. And yeah. then. And then I was getting on, we had this bike in the garage that told you how many calories you were losing at the time. That was like, oh, wow, this is so cool. Now it, you could just do that on your phone. But at the time that was cool. So, and I would do that every day and I would burn 300 calories on the bike. So really every night I was going to bed having only 200 calories right. in my system. And uh, well, it worked. Yeah. You were basically fasting, slowly yeah. killing yourself. Right. Slowly. Uh, yeah, the best, but then, yeah, then I did the, then I gained all that weight back and then I did P90X yeah. and, uh, that was, that was for the most part, just pretty straightforward. Yeah. Uh, and then this yeah. past time was the best. That's when I did keto and, uh, that yeah. was the skinniest I ever was. And, and now you're a vegan again. Yeah. Well, I'm a vegetarian. I've never been a vegetarian before. I'm oh. a vegetarian now. And, uh, I'm I definitely, I'm the heaviest vegetarian on the planet. <laughs> I, I would, I would think. Yeah. Well. Well, at least you're not killing animals, so yeah, you know, yeah. I'm yeah. just not taking part in that anymore. Yeah, not doing that. But That's good. People don't I'm proud people of you. Don't, yeah, people don't realize that there is vegetarian items at Taco Bell. So I'm, uh, I'm <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm still gorging. Right. You, you don't want you don't cream. want to make the mistake that you did last time and like you know take in too little calories. You don't want to do that again. So yeah. now, now you're just you know four thousand calories or more a day. That's yeah, that's per, where we're at. Yeah, a day per meal. I would say per, per meal. Oh God. All right. Well, good luck. Yeah. And uh, listen, if anybody needs a hand stripping right now, it would be you. Mm. And, but let's talk about this episode. Hand stripping. Should dog groomers hand strip or not? Okay, guys, we're not going to go either way on this one um, because some dog groomers choose to do it. A lot don't. Good luck finding a dog groomer out there that still hand strips. And if they do, I hope they're being compensated for it because it's very costly and it's very time consuming. So, but let's talk about what hand stripping is. Okay, hand stripping is mostly done on your terrier breeds, some of your sporting breeds, but not a whole lot of them. But hand stripping is the process of actually pulling the dog's undercoat out again mostly on terrier breeds so we're pulling the undercoat out manually with what's called a stripping knife and a stripping knife is it's got like a little serrated edge it almost looks like a kitchen knife but very very much smaller than like a steak knife kind of thing and it has a handle where you know you press your thumb up against the serrated part of the tool and you grab hair and you pull out the undercoat that's what hand stripping is. And you have to do that all the way down the back of the dog and, you know, even down blending into the leg area on the head. It's a very, very long grueling process. And, you know, some dogs will take to this and a lot of dogs won't. But again, should groomers do it? I think at this point in dog grooming, unless a groomer has the time to do it, they're generally not going to do it because there's just too many other dogs that need to get groomed. So the alternative to hand stripping in, in a grooming shop is, of course, giving the dog a haircut with, with a clipper, a clipper cutting the dog. But once you start clipper cutting the dog, you're really not going to be very successful with hand stripping the dog, especially as the dog gets older because he's just not going to accept it. And more than that, the coat isn't going to be coarse enough to be pulled out anymore. When you first start hand stripping a puppy, it's very difficult. Is it painful? Uh, yes, no, I don't know. I, I know I'm going to get crap for this one, you know, on either side. You know, is it painful? I say yes. If it's done incorrectly, it's even more painful, but it becomes less and less painful as the coat starts to become more coarse and the skin starts to become a little bit more callous, the hair pulls out much easier. So eventually it's really not painful at all. But initially I think it is. So again, you have to have a very tolerant dog and you also have to have a groomer that's willing to do that. 
And uh, again, I don't know that a whole lot of groomers are doing it. And if you are, definitely, you know, give us a comment. Let us know how you're making out with that. Because again, it used to be a little bit bigger of a thing to do. But now with so many dogs, there's not a whole lot of time for to spend that much time hand stripping a, a dog. I guess it's it's like anything with grooming, really. Like, um, if done incorrectly, it'll hurt. I mean, you could really apply that to a lot of things in grooming. It's like if you're cleaning a dog's ears and you go too far, they're doing it incorrectly. It's gonna hurt, you know. Sure. And, yeah. You know. So I guess it's uh, I guess it's one of those. The difference is hand stripping, like you've said, is super time consuming. On top mm-hmm. of it, so to do it correctly, you really got to slow up and do it right. And now you're sucking up even more time because it's not something you can rush. So right. You know, exactly. That's what it is. And, you know, then people will ask the question, well, you know, why? Why do we hand strip? All right. Well, you know, one of the main reasons is just to maintain like the coat and the color of the coat, because what happens is if you don't hand strip, the undercoat is going to come in and it's going to kind of lighten the coat, especially on like, say, like your Welsh Terriers, things like that. Like, uh, you know, you're, you're going to have like this patchy undercoat coming in that you're going to eventually have to clip when you're hand stripping. It does flatten the coat, gets all that undercoat out and the dog will actually maintain its color. And, um, you know, they, they tend to look really nice when they're hand stripped. The other reason why we would hand strip other two reasons are that you can't show a dog if it's not hand stripped. So if a dog is clipper cut, if a terrier is clipper cut in any way, he won't qualify to do that show. So the the dog has to be hand stripped in order to be shown. Also, if the dog is actually working in the field, it's going to be beneficial too just to maintain his coat and uh, keep him healthy if he's out there working out on the field would be another reason why you would want to hand strip uh, just to you know keep the dog very uh, agile and when you when you hand strip the the coat comes out very brittle very slippery uh, it's kind of really hard to explain but if you if you've ever pet a terrier whose coat was hand stripped it's very like brittle and very slippery so I'm pretty sure the intent of that is that they are able to kind of go into holes and you know hunt out game or or rats or whatever breed is whatever their job specific is that they can actually fit into things and kind of slide into say holes or to grab rats or something like that. But again, the main reason would be to just to maintain it and to breed it and to breed and show it rather, which I think that if you guys are looking for someone to hand strip, you'd be better off finding like a breeder handler as opposed to, uh, you know, a dog groomer. Uh, not to say that there are some dog groomers out there that do hand strip. They do. But, you know, uh, you would really have to find one who does it and does it properly without hurting the dog. Agreed. Okay. (laughs) You said, well, this is one of those things where it's like you're saying everything really good and I'm afraid to say anything else because I'm going to sound stupid compared to you. (laughs) No, it's just, you know, it's just, it's one of those things that if you've groomed long enough, you know, you learn. I'm not so sure that groomers who are being taught how to groom nowadays are really being taught anything about hand stripping. It's kind of like a dying art. Uh, as far as dog grooming is concerned, when I first started dog grooming, I had a couple of clients that, you know, wanted their dogs hand stripped and, um, you know, we did it and, uh, it's very difficult. It's hard on your thumb. It's hard on your hand and your wrist. Cause you are just sitting there for, you know, an hour, you know, or more pulling out little bits of hair, one, you know, like just a group, small, like one inch group of hair at a time throughout the whole dog. If you're doing this on, on a Scotty, something like that. I mean, you're talking, you know, Scotties are big dogs. Have you ever seen a Scotty, Anthony? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. They're like the big giant short dog, you know, <laughs> with the with the big muzzle. You know, yeah. you're going to spend a lot of time even like on an Airedale Terrier. I mean, these are big dogs. So you can imagine pulling out hair one inch at a time on that magnitude of a dog you know (laughs) really not worth it in my opinion i guess in general especially on our level because you know if it's a show dog thing yeah you know okay well that's one dog that's getting worked on by the same person all the time so i guess there's that's a bit of a different situation for us though like you know you know you're not your dog's not a show dog let's just not bother with that dog's just going home you're not showing the dog yeah Um, 
You know? Yeah, and 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 is it easier on the dog? Is it less stressful and less painful on the? Of course it is. You know, you're clippering the dog, you're giving it a haircut, and it's still your dog. And uh, I think one of the things that what people need to understand, if you guys are still hand stripping out there, is that people would bring clients would bring their dogs in expecting you to hand strip their dog like once every you know six weeks like a regular grooming schedule and it, it just does not work that way you can't hand strip a dog properly after there's six weeks of hair growth you know if you're gonna hand strip correctly you know you have to do it more often you'd be hand stripping that dog once a week you know what i mean so unless the client is also hand stripping the dog at home you as the groomer really wouldn't be able to properly hand strip if you're doing it every six weeks because the undercoat would be all grown in by then and it would have to be pulled out much sooner than that and much more frequent. The longer you wait, the more painful it is to the dog at that point. Uh, so it's one of those things that if you choose to do, you have to start the dog off early and you have to do it regularly, man. You, or, did I just say regularly? Oh, uh, Yeah. Re- Re- regular, do it regularly, man. and then you said regularly, man. <laughs> like the people listening are right in front of us, and it's one person. You got to do it regularly, man. And then, yeah. I'm sorry, guys. I am so exhausted right now. You have no <laughs> idea. I'm on two hours sleep trying to talk. Yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, listen, hand stripping looks cool. It looks really, really cool. You know, there are some benefits to it, but again, it's, uh, it's not the best thing either. You know, I mean, unless you just absolutely have to do it because you have a show dog or something like that. So, uh, it's up to the groomer to decide whether they want to offer that service. We really don't. I've worked with a lot of show dogs in the past where I've, I've hand stripped and, uh, believe it or not, the handlers like uh, show dog handlers, you know what? They actually do it better. You know, and a lot of these people have grooming experience. They're not like us where they have a grooming shop. But you know what? They're going to hand strip a dog faster, better than a groomer ever could. So, again, it's just kind of one of those things that I think handlers specialize in more than, say, you know, dog groomers like us, you know? Yeah, yeah. I specialize in figuring out ways to eat Taco Bell as a vegetarian and being successful. That's really my level of expertise. Yeah. So hand stripping is far beyond my pay grade. <laughs> right. You're, you're not thinking of hand stripping like at all. Like, no, no. I'm, I'm thinking like, of dinner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's where Anthony, Anthony's mind goes all the time. <laughs> like I know what Anthony's thinking right now, guys. He's thinking, man, as soon as we're done with the podcast, man, I'm going to say bye to Mark and I'm driving down to Taco Bell. That's right that, down the street. I, that was, yep, that's what Anthony's doing right now. You know, or, or you know what? I got to grab some chips from the Dollar Tree. Yeah, yeah. Well, I made a, a vow the day <laughs> that I moved out of my mom's house that I would never live this far from a Taco Bell ever again. <laughs> and so far, it's going good. I've moved twice since then. Yeah. And I've now, thankfully... Yeah, I'm now doing great, and I have, yeah. in, for the last now five years of my life, I have lived within a one mile radius of a Taco Bell. Uh, of a Taco Bell, mm-hmm. don't ever make that mistake again. I won't. Oh, I won't. Because I remember, I remember when you were far away from a Taco Bell, your whole personality changed. It affected you. You it became affected. very, very depressed. Yes, and yes. we we well, don't we don't want that to happen. Why do you think I still live in New Jersey? Yeah, there's there's an abundance of Taco Bell here. Well, yes, yeah, I know, I know, and it's uh, you know it's a good thing, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we can talk about hand stripping all we want, but it's always going to come back to Taco Bell one way or another. This is just, you know, it's just the answer to life. That's me. That's, that's so, just me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's Our, Taco Bell in Florida. There is. Yes. This Our just producer in, just mentioned yep. to us. Thank you, we're getting, Mark. We're getting a bulletin now. This is a hot take right here. Apparently Uh-oh. there are Taco Bells in Florida. So, <clears throat> and I don't Uh-oh. like winter that much. Yeah. So maybe we got to move down to Florida. We're, we're, we're talking relocation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, listen, guys, we always try to figure out the liaison between trying to talk about ourselves and being funny or thinking we're funny <laughs> and talking about dog grooming. There's nothing funny about dog grooming. I'm sorry. It's just oh, not really. funny. You know, it's a very serious matter. Yeah. Dog grooming is only funny when, um, well, this is kind of funny when in dog grooming, you groomers out there might have, you, you definitely have seen this. Do you guys ever have a dog kind of like press its little nose up against the cage and the, the top lip 
<laughs> like, you know what I mean? And and yes. like, it looks like they're growling, but the, it's only because the top lip is like sort of resting on the cage and the yeah. rest of their face is pointed down. <laughs> and, and, and their and teeth their looks like they're smiling. Showing. Yeah, it looks yeah. like they're smiling or growling yeah. and they're just sitting there. Sometimes they fall asleep like <laughs> they that. Fall and it's asleep. hysterical. It's hysterical. Yeah, yeah. We, I a, love that. Yeah. yeah, I love the end of the day when everything's just calm and all the dogs just fall asleep. You know, and we just fall asleep with them. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it's hysterical. It yeah. in the morning sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Like, tired. Yeah. All right, guys. So what we're gonna do is uh, we got the our funny comment segment coming up. So we're gonna go to break. We're gonna sum up the uh, hand stripping uh, topic here, and uh, and we're gonna talk about our funny segment. Uh, and uh, we got it coming up when we come back on Groomer Humor. <laughs> It's October, and there are spooky scares everywhere. When it comes to your dog's everyday health, you don't have to be spooked when you have Daily Dose. Daily Dose is a two-in-one dog chew that pairs a powerful dental scrub with vet-developed supplements for full body health and seriously clean smiles. Now pay attention. Through October 31st, enter for a chance to win all four bags of Daily Dose in coming joint heart and skin health. Just post a picture of your pup smile with the hashtag Serious Smile Sweeps to any of Pet Life Radio's Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook pages. Good luck! <laughs> Visit yourpetsdailydose.com to save $3 on your first bag with promo code PETLIFE. That's yourpetsdailydose.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Dot com. Welcome back to Groomer Humor on Pet Life Radio. We are your hosts. I'm Anthony Ray, hanging out with my dad, Rudy B. And we're talking about hand stripping. Do you do it? Do you not do it? We don't do it. We don't, we really don't do, do it. it. We, we don't, don't do it. it. No. We don't. But if you choose to do it, that's fine. That's fine. Just, you know, hopefully you have some experience doing it. You're doing it properly. And, uh, you know, and also, you know, you're getting compensated for it. I'm sorry. It takes a really, really long time. So you groomers out there, you know, you guys are hand stripping. I hope you're earning your uh, keep there. And, uh, you know, definitely uh, you got to charge more for that. You just do just uh, way too time consuming. Uh, but personally, we don't do it. Not to say that we won't maybe do it in the future. Maybe we will. It depends. If we get a show dog that walks through the door and, uh, you know, we uh, we want to work with them or something like that, you, you know, we'll definitely say yes to it. So, but again, should we, should we not? Yes and no, I guess. It's up to you guys. With that being said, let's get to this funny comment segment. I'm a professional. And I really like this comment. And. I have to do it in burnout voice. I have to ask because I just, I'm just, when, when I read it to you, I'm just assuming whoever wrote this down probably, you know, burned a nice stogie, you know, right before he jumped on our channel. Okay. And, and you'll know what I'm talking about. So, you know, th- this is the comment. Would you rather be bitten by a Rottweiler or a pit? <laughs> Don't say neither. You got to pick one. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> which one so we, we can't even say neither you know yeah, so okay. uh, don't say neither you gotta pick one this guy is having fun on yeah. our channel <laughs> right that, hey however we could bring you joy <laughs> yeah you know what i mean yeah. so anyway so pick one i okay uh from my end would i rather be bitten by a rottweiler or a pit oh my god what a question. All right, so my choices are the Rottweiler, who probably stands about an inch taller than me, okay, <laughs> is going to go straight for my neck and forget being bit. It's going to kill me, 
Okay, wow. with one bite and suffocate me. So that's my one choice. Or, or I have the lesser stature dog, the pit bull, who you know, who's delivering you know approximately two hundred and fifty pounds of pressure with mm. teeth combined to that, capable of snapping bone. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so let me see. I guess you know what I don't have a death wish, so I'm gonna go with the pit bull. I guess I'll just get my hand bitten clear off, yeah. uh, you know, because he can't reach my neck. Although <laughs> there's a couple of pit bulls out there that probably could reach my neck, so I'm gonna go with pit bull. I'd rather get bitten by a pit that's, bull. Yeah, <laughs> that's understandable if you have to pick one. <laughs> I, um, well, he said, yeah, we have to. We, yeah, we have to. <laughs> well, this is perfect because you picked pit, and I was actually gonna say Rottweiler. Really. Um, Yes, there for two reasons. Number one, many of you might not know this. I don't know if I mentioned in the past, but I've actually been bit in the face, more specifically in the lip by a pit bull <laughs> one time. Yeah, it was uh, it's a quick story. Actually, uh, we were at a party and uh, a friend of mine's pit bull was having a false pregnancy. and She was still being so sweet. She had a little toy. She was protecting them and she was being real sweet to me. And uh, but it was a party. Not not like a big party. And I'm sitting on the couch with her. She's being really sweet. She's letting me near her, which is good. So, you know, and I felt bad for the dog because false pregnancies are really rough on dogs. I, I hate when that happens to them. And, uh, you know, I started trusting her more. She's licking my hand. And she's even, like, kissing my cheek a little bit. And, you know, I'll admit I'm, I'm pretty dumb for even allowing the dog to anywhere near my face. But anyway, just as she was giving me a kiss on the cheek, a balloon landed <laughs> right yeah. by us and popped right as she was doing that. And it scared the crap out of her. And, uh, yeah, and I looked at her right as the balloon popped because it scared me, too, and she bit me in the lip. Ooh. Um, Yeah, she didn't That's take scary. my lip, thankfully. Yeah, it was horrifying. And uh, But it was all right. It bled. Okay. Uh, she didn't take it off, and, uh, you know, everything was fine. It wasn't the dog's fault. It wasn't my fault, really. Well, I guess it was my fault. Shouldn't You know, dogs having yeah. a false pregnancy. What are you giving a kisses for? Yeah. Uh, leave it, just leave it the hell alone. Yeah, um, stupid. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that was kind of dumb on my part. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, so I got through that, and the second reason is – it's October right now, and I'm watching a lot of horror movies, and I just watched the movie Don't Breathe yesterday. And uh, for anybody out there who hasn't seen that horror movie, it's about three thieves who break into a guy's house who is blind, and uh, this is the wrong guy's house to break into. He's a retired <laughs> military vet. He's blind, but the lights are out, so it's an even playing field, and he's just he's just messing them up. Anyway, he has a Rottweiler, and let me tell you, that dog is absolutely ruthless the entire movie and Roddy's it just like they they're so strong not that pit bulls aren't for sure but yeah. there's a scene in that movie where the dog it's kind of like a Cujo scene <laughs> and and the girl is locked in a car and, and the dog is out there so she has the idea of let me open the trunk from inside the car and uh you know it's one of those cars where the seats go back go forward rather the back seats and she could get in the trunk and the dog jumps in the trunk and she tries to close the seats to lock the dog in the trunk and the dog is so strong that he just comes right through the seats <laughs> and and it's just like well that didn't work why because it's a rottweiler and they're stronger than you yeah um they're just that's just a fact they're stronger uh, than you yeah so you're yeah gonna go, I, you're, you're i'm going, going with, with roddy right, yeah well, yeah you know, i think see, i'm going with I've, roddy I've, See, now that surprises me. That's right. That's right. Because you know what it is, too? Roddies are, because it's not like sweet Roddies don't exist, just like Aww. pitbulls. They're, and, you know, they're pitbulls, all sweet. Yeah, they're all sweet. So I feel like I could convince a Rottweiler, like, dude, don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. I feel like I have a better chance of convincing a Roddy, dude, right. dude, but I like you. <laughs> like you think you can get through to the Rottweiler yeah. more so, more yeah. so than, like, he'll listen to you like, hey, mm -hmm. Mr. Rottweiler. Please don't bite me. You know, yeah, like, and he would listen right. to you more than the pit bull. Right. I feel like yeah. a pit bull would just, like if a pit bull wasn't nice and wanted to hurt you and was yeah. standing there and you started trying to talk to it. I feel like the pit bull is just going to do like the tilt head. Yeah. And just go, what, 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 what? what? No, yeah, no, no, dude, start running. Are you crazy? <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. Just start. I'm giving right, you a head right, start. Right, go. Right. Right, you think you could just maybe uh, talk the Roddy out of it? Uh, maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, don't know. I, I can see that. I can see that. But uh, yeah. you know what? Roddy's pits, they're cute. They're sweet. They're not aggressive, but they can be. But uh, I, yeah, I like to hit. Well, so anyway, Josh out there, uh, <laughs> I, I picked, um, I picked. Rot, I picked Bull and Anthony picked Rottweiler. I so. picked Rottweiler, Josh. So, so we I, picked. So I you can't say anything. I hope yeah. I want to hear from this guy again. I actually want another question from him. 
yeah, I like how he uh, watches our channel. You know, he's nice yeah. and lit. And listen, that that's impressive <laughs> to to like you know go heads into a bowl and then <laughs> hop on YouTube and find us of all of all the stuff that's <laughs> exactly. out. Exactly. What yeah. else are you watching? Yeah, right. We definitely <laughs> popped up how'd on recommend. <laughs> how'd you stumble on us? Yeah. You know right. I mean? Right. Thanks for but, finding us, though. But, but thank you, yeah, thank Josh. You. Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right. all right. Well, thanks so much for stopping by, guys. As always, we'd like to thank our producer, Mark Winter. Thank you so much, Mark. If you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel. It's called Grooming by Rudy. That's Grooming by Rudy on YouTube.com. Leave a comment, like, share, and subscribe. We want to hear from all you guys. You could also like Grooming by Rudy on Facebook. Follow Grooming by Rudy on Instagram and Twitter. It has been an absolute pleasure, as always. Until next time, take care of yourselves and your pets. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand. Only on PetLifeRadio.com.